Hello, this is Nathan Webb, and this is a Maya tutorial on how to put joints in a character. We're using Maya 2011 today, and this is a character which I modeled myself. It's based off a comic book character from Chu, the Chu comic book. We're going to make sure that we're in animation mode. Animation is where we put joints in the characters. It puts our shelf here. Here's the joint tool. This is that what we're going to use. You can just click on that or you could go over to skeleton joint tool. Joints are like bones in the human body. They allow us to bend the characters. So we're going to put a skeleton inside of the character so it'll deform the mesh. I like starting off with the legs. I go to the side view and I'm going to put one in for his thigh, one for his knee. Make sure you put a little bend in the leg. One for the ankle, one for the ball of the foot, and one for the tip of the toe. Be sure to hit enter when you're done making your joints. You want to hit enter to finish the joint chain. So if you look at it from the front view, we can see that the joints were made in the center of world space in X. So we want to move those joints over to the side. You want to have the joints be straight up and down because we're going to use IK for the legs. Also, before you get going putting in the joints, we should have checked to make sure that our character mesh doesn't have any translation on it. If so, you want to freeze transformations. Go to modify, freeze transformations. You want your character to be facing forward in the z-axis. You want them to be centered in the x-axis. And you also want to make sure that his feet are on the ground. So my character's feet is mostly on the ground. We can move them down just a little bit more to make sure. And then remember to freeze your transformations. When you make our joints, we want to make sure that we name the joints. This one will be thigh. And let's put a left and a right on it. And we always use the character's left. Even though this is screen right, it is the character's left leg. So that one's thigh. This is going to be knee, left. It's going to be ankle, left. This will be ball, left. It's the ball of your foot. Or you could call it toe if you want. And the last one is going to be end of foot left. I want to put end on this because all the joints at the end of a chain, they're not going to be used because you don't actually have joints at the end of your foot. That just shows you where your end of your foot is and it'll draw a bone because the joints themselves, these little circles, they're what's actually rotating your geometry and the bone, the triangle part, that's just a visual, visual representation of which way the joints are parented. They point towards the children. So this toe joint here is the parent of the end of the toe joint. After we get one leg done here, we can just duplicate it to the other side. There's also an option to mirror the joints, but I'm just gonna hit Control D to duplicate, and we can move it over to the other side. We can see that this joint's x is 8.91. We can copy that over to the other one and just make sure we stick a negative in it. There we go. So these should be lined up. Now we don't want this one to have the name LT1 on it. So I'm going to use a useful tool, modify, search and replace names. I'm going to replace left with right and hit apply. That changes all of our names over to the right. Now, we want to make sure our joints have X going down the joint axes. You can see that by this little red line. To see it better, you can go up to Display, Transform Display, Local Rotation Axes, and make sure you show everything. And then you can see which way your joints are moved. If you hit G, it'll redo the last command. So we can hit G and see that these joints are going down. The X axis is going down the, the joint chain. Now we want to do a spine. 
I'm going to do it in the side view. Even though the human spine is really close to the back of the character, I'm going to put mine mostly in the middle of the character. I'm going to put it up around here. So I'm going to make sure I use the joint tool again. And also, even though the human spine has a curve, has an S curve in it, it's easiest to make your joints go straight up and down for when you're doing hand key animation or especially for motion capture animation you want to have your joint chain be straight up and down so the rotations are easier to deal with so to make something go straight in Maya hold the shift key I'm gonna hold the shift key here click once for the base up here one two three maybe four and hit enter you don't need a whole bunch of joints for the spine especially for this character he's kind of low poly but I like making low poly characters and then you can put a smooth mesh on it or you can get a preview but it's by hitting two you can see that the character looks a lot smoother so for the joints let's name them spine I'm gonna go to modify search and replace names change joint to spine hit apply you don't have to hit anything fancy for lower spine middle spine whatever that's good enough and if we want to move the joints maybe they weren't quite evenly spaced if you just move them normally all the children move up and down sometimes you want that to happen but if you want to move a joint in the middle of a chain without moving the other joints around you can hold the D button to which is the move pivot point tool for a joint it lets you move joints without moving as children so I hold down D and then you can move a joint up and down you can also hit the insert button which is a toggle for the move pivot point and then once you have it aligned to where you want it to be hit insert again to toggle it off this one maybe we want a little higher for his chest and then this one's just going to be the end of his chest so this one will be your main rotation that'll rotate your waist this will do your stomach area this will do your chest area and maybe we don't even need this one on the top here this one because the top of your chest you have a sternum and a solid rib cage your chest doesn't deform too much so that should be good for doing the spine now we want to do the arms so the arms go out from your chest this way I'm gonna do it in the top view because just like we had did for the legs we want to put a little bend in the arms so I'm gonna start my shoulder around here I'll put my elbow there and my wrist here and then the end of the hands here we're gonna do the fingers later but first I just want the basics notice I have the nice bend in there and then from the front view got to make sure you put your arm up it puts it down at y equals zero when you look in the top view we want our arm in the center of the character something like that the character is going to be in a T stance that's the most common way to model your character some of them move the arms down at about a 45 degrees in what they call uh, an A stance the next step is to put in the clavicle for the character that way it'll help you shrug your shoulders we're gonna put a clavicle I like putting mine right around here for the character and to help your arm twisting I'm actually gonna line it up in Y with the, this joint so I could just take the value here copy it take this one and paste it whoops that was X we're gonna put it in Y what what I actually would do is just hold down V to snap I'm gonna snap that clavicle joint over to this one and then I'm just gonna move it in X so this is gonna be where my clavicle is the clavicle is gonna help you move your shoulders because if you try to rotate your shoulder like a real human's shoulder up your shoulder doesn't really rotate up that much your whatever bones in your upper arm can't rotate that much up it can't rotate all the way up what you actually have is your clavicle moves a lot so your clavicle is going to help your shoulder deformations so this one's going to be our clavicle joint clavicle left let's rename 
our other ones as well. This one's shoulder, or some people call it upper arm. Arm, left, we'll have elbow, left, we'll have wrist left, left. This one is end of hand left. I'm actually gonna end up deleting this one later once I put fingers on. But putting a joint at the end of a chain will help you orient your last one because your joints always have X, at least when you set it up. It has X point towards the end of the chain. But if you don't have one at the end of the chain, it doesn't know which way to orient. So I always put one at the end of the chain there. And then to parent your, we want our upper arm parented to our clavicle. So I could select my upper arm, select my clavicle and hit P and then that draws a line to the other joint. The bones point from the child parent, which is the clavicle, to the child. So that's my arm. Even though your real sternum or clavicle joint is up here someplace, I'm just going to leave it in alignment. That'll help us rotate the arm a little better. And then your clavicle should be parented to the top of your chest. So hit the P button. There's the arm. We could also, when you twist your wrist, you actually have two j bones in your arm which overlap each other. And in a 3D character, we can get bad deformations in the wrist area. So it's often common to find a twist or roll bone in the forearm. To add a joint, once you already have a, your skeleton in there, we'll go up to skeleton insert joint tool and then we'll click on the elbow and drag down and we're going to put this other joint about halfway in between. You notice how it makes it in a straight line. We want to make sure our joints for the forearm are in a straight line. We can go and do the head now. So from the side view, this guy's a long neck so I might actually put two head joints in or neck joints. I'm going to have a, his neck joint be right here and then we could have one here, and then we're gonna have one on the top of his head. The one on the top of the head isn't really gonna do anything. It's just gonna visually show us where the top of the head is. And also, this joint here, you, you think you'd put your head rotation at the base of your head, but really, now this guy doesn't have an ear, but your head actually rotates from around your jawline or where your ear, the base of your ear is. So I'm going to take this joint and move it up to be about where his ear would be. And I might want to have another joint in here for his neck. So I'll use that insert joint tool again. I'll go to skeleton, insert joint tool, and then click on the base of the neck and then move up. And then we'll have another joint around here. Maybe I can move it a little bit so it's more in the center of his neck. Now when you move a joint, the orient's going to be off a little bit. We'll go to display, transform display, local rotation axes. Huh, doesn't seem to want to show. Anyways, I want to make sure I go to reorient this joint. I'm going to go to skeleton and then orient joint. And you saw that the joint rotated. When you translate a joint once it's already been placed in Maya, the orientation can be off. Let's take a look in the front view to see where our joints are. And we have our neck right here. And let's connect that to our chest area. We don't need this joint right here. I'll just hit delete. And then I'm going to select this one and this one and hit the P button. 